Hi, everybody. My name is Abraham. I'm your big brother in recovery. Coming to you again with another educational video on how to help you transform your thinking so you could at least achieve sustainable sobriety. Uh, for all of you who are new to the channel, we ask that you press the like and also subscribe so you can be updated on all the videos that we do in the future. You know, I am really, really thankful for everybody who is on the list who have subscribed and you guys are leaving comments and continue to do so because uh, it is very, very important to me that I fulfill my life purpose, which is help people in recovery to achieve sustainable sobriety. You know, so today I want to get right into it. I know you have other things to do than to listen to me, but I want to warn you first. Don't believe anything I say, but go back and research what I'm going to show you and you'll have a greater appreciation for me because, you know, I pride myself on <clears throat> a person who is an educator and not an entertainer. And this is not to degrade anybody because our program of recovery should be an upgrading program, not a degrading program. And none of us has all the answers. But one of the things I do is, and one of the things I've found out since I've been in recovery for these 38 years, is that the more I learn, the less I find out that I know. Now, what I want to talk to you about is a very, very necessary topic. And the topic today is going to be called the truth or consequences. You know, I remember a TV game show called Truth or Consequences, and they would come on and they would give some fabrications and they would also tell the truth. And you had to figure out if what the person was saying was true or whether it was false. So I want to read something to you because the question should be, what is truth? That's a question. What is truth? I'm going to answer that question for you as best I can. I believe, and we're all entitled to our opinions, even though opinions are like garbage cans, everybody has one. I believe truth is original information. Therefore, if the information is secondary, we may need to question the validity of, the, of its truth. So, with that being said, we're going to use two books today. Obviously, the one where the program of recovery is located, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, and we're going to wipe the dust off the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions book. So get those and or listen to this video and go back and replay it again so you can keep up with me in real time. So what is truth? Original information. So I want to tell you something about truth that's interesting to me. I want to read something to you. It is not the reading of truth or even the enjoying of truth that brings the promises. It is the doing of truth. And when you put these truths into practice, you get the necessary results. Truth is never, here's an Abrahamism. Therefore, truth is never invented. Truth is always discovered. And a biblical text says, and when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. So it's my sincere desire for all of, those, the, of you who are listening to me to be free like I'm free. Because freedom is an attribute that is guaranteed if you do what we say do. Rarely have we seen a person fail or relapse who has thoroughly followed our path. Now, let's dive straight off into what we want to talk about. I'm saying something that is not a judgmental statement, but it is a truth. It's not a myth. I believe that there is something equally, I want to strongly emphasize equally, as devastating as the disease of addiction. And I believe that other alternative is a misinformed member. You know, these there are a lot of misinformed members, and they may have good intentions. 
but the road to hell has good intentions, you know, um, and so therefore you have to study to show yourself approved, to know what's in the literature, because if you don't, you will be misled by misinformed members. And you can identify some of them because they normally put a moniker before their names. Basic text, Johnny, 12 and 12, Tyrone, Big Book, Joey, Little Red Book, Lisa, you know, so on and so forth. Bottles and Stew, Baba Tunde. You know, but I say that not to be funny, not at all, because many of you know I'm about empowerment, not enslavement. But I don't take back the statement I just made because our book clearly states that we are supposed to announce ourselves as members as opposed to putting a moniker before our name because even Bill W., did not call himself Big Book Bill. In other words, look at Roman numeral page XIII, forward to the first edition. Notice what it says. The second to the last paragraph on the page, at the bottom of the page, when writing or speaking publicly about alcoholism, we urge each of our fellowship to omit his personal name, designating himself instead as a member. You know, people can call themselves what they want, and I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I'm only telling you how to stay away from the deception, which is an imitation of the truth. You know, it's very easy for one to read and regurgitate, look that word up because I didn't want to be graphic by telling you what it means, to regurgitate a paragraph and sound profound if you haven't read because you can uh, say the paragraph out of context instead of syntax. And so therefore, a homing pigeon can carry a message and never look at it. And the message says, kill the pigeon upon arrival. You know, so I don't want anybody to be misled by anything I say nor by anything anyone else says, because I want you to know the truth, because only the truth is going to make you free. Now, with that being laid as a foundation, let's ponder or let's get exploratory in the big book on what truth is. Now, I know there are many ways to recover. But what we're doing right now is we're using this basis or this platform, which is the Minnesota model that AA came up with, these 12 steps, to talk about recovery today on this channel because it is one of the proven methods that's effective. So are all the plethora of other methods. They're all successful. But I want to let you know, number one, this isn't the only way. But this is the way that we're going to use today. So, with your book in hand, Roman numeral page XXI, we're talking about truth or consequences. I want you to look at the, it's only a portion of a paragraph on that page, but I want you to look at the last line on Roman numeral page XXI. I'm going to be reading from a few places in the big book and one place in the 12 and 12 on the conclusion. And it says, Yet it is our great hope that all those who have as yet found no answer may begin to find one in the pages of this book and will presently join us on the high road to a new freedom. You know, we talked about freedom earlier, but one thing to know, and it's noteworthy for you to notice, is that even freedom isn't free. There's a price to pay for freedom. And I often say that sobriety is free. However, recovery costs. Why? Because recovery or addiction is not a choice, but recovery is. So we're talking about either accept the truth or accept the consequences. I would like for you now to go to a chapter that's interesting. Chapter 2 of the big book called There is a Solution. Now, why would they put a chapter in the big book called There is a Solution if there wasn't? 
Now, I want to show you what the entertainers will tell you. Entertainers, for reasons unknown, either because they don't know they don't know, or it's because they haven't totally surrendered, but it can be a, a multitude of reasons, but we're not here to condemn anybody. And I want to strongly emphasize that that's not what I'm doing right now, simply because I want for my brothers and sisters what I want for myself. That's why I'm doing the channel, because maybe they don't know. It doesn't matter if it's your sponsor, your grand sponsor, or even an entire fellowship. They all can be wrong if they never read the book, because guess what? The program of recovery is located in the book. You hear entertainers say stuff like, we never recover. Well, why would they have a chapter in the book called There's a Solution? And I believe in another fellowship in chapter 7, in their table of contents, there's a chapter called We Do Recover. So let's look at something. The last paragraph on page 17. Let's read it together. The tremendous fact for every one of us is that we have discovered a common solution. We have a way out which we can absolutely agree and upon which we can join in brotherly and harmonious action. This is the great news this book carries to those who suffer from alcoholism. You know, sobriety, the, the literature says on page 82, we feel a man is unthinking if he thinks that sobriety is enough. That's a powerful statement. So therefore, that tells me something. The goal should never be to be clean and sober. The goal is to love yourself so much until you don't want to use or be used by anything other than God. So, if you look at the top paragraph on There is a Solution, it says, We of Alcoholics Anonymous know thousands of men and women who were once just as hopeless as Bill. Nearly all have recovered. They have solved the drink problem. I guess we can put addiction problem there. Why? Because what the goal should be is to recover from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Why? Because addiction is twofold. It not only kills your mind, but your mind turns around and kills your body because there's a mental obsession and a physical craving, which simply means one is too many, and a thousand isn't enough. So I'm doing this video to encourage somebody out there by providing the message of hope because that's all recovery is, one word, the message is hope. But what is the message? Talking about truth. The message is simply this, we do recover. So as I told you, the thing that is much more dangerous or equally as dangerous is a misinformed member. You will hear stuff like, this is a selfish program. If it's a selfish program, think about something. How can I give or keep it in order to give it away? I have to give it away in order to keep it. So what's selfish about that? As a matter of fact, selfishness is what got me in here because self-will runs riot. In other words, a recovered person is one who has surrendered self-will for God's will. In addition to that, you will hear other comments. You will hear people say things to the extent that, you know what, you never get better, you're crazy. No, the book said you weren't insane. You're not crazy. You're a good person. You just did a bad thing. Why? There is no chemical solution for your spiritual problem. Let's continue to read what the book says. Let's read the truth. I'd like for you to go with me to page 25, page 25. Second paragraph, well, the first paragraph, you see it starts off with there's a solution. You can read that entire paragraph. And then at the middle of that paragraph, it talks about us picking up a simple, not complicated, simple kit of spiritual tools laid at our feet, a simple kit. And basically, they're talking about those steps. Now, if you look at the bottom, here is the litmus test to find out. You remember we talked about truth? If you don't embrace the truth, you've already made a decision to embrace the consequences. In other words, if you're not pursuing recovery, you're pursuing 
relapse or resuming, whatever the case is, because nothing, absolutely nothing, stays still in this world. Nothing's constant but change. Last paragraph on page 25. If you are as seriously alcoholic as we were, notice were, not are, were. Why? We admitted we were at one time. Now we are not. Why? Because we picked up the spiritual tools. We believe there is no middle of the road solution. You don't need an interpreter for that. Here's a choice, truth or consequences. We were, there it goes again, in a position where life was becoming impossible. And if we had passed into the region from which there is no return through human aid, you remember, A, alcoholic, couldn't manage my own life, B, probably no human power could relieve my addiction. That means my grand sponsor, I hear entertainers talk about their sponsor keeping them sober, can't do it. No human power could have helped you. We had but two alternatives. One was to go on to the bitter end, blotting out the conscious, not subconscious, the conscious, totally aware of our intolerable situation as best we could. And the other, to accept spiritual help. That's interesting. This we decide we did because we honestly, step one, we honestly wanted to and were willing to make the effort. And if you look at the bottom of that page, it talks about fully explained on page 567, or if you're in the original big book, page 569. I got a large print. You should read about spiritual experiences and spiritual awakenings. Notice the experience comes before the awakening. Chapter 12, I mean, uh, uh, step 12, haven't had a spiritual awakening as a result of this process or these steps. We tried to carry this message to alcoholics and practice these principles in all our affairs. Mainly the message is we do recover. Why? We have recovered. So now we can carry that message to the person who's still suffering, both in and out of the rooms, but behind each one of those 12 steps are 12 principles, right? Principles before personalities. Why? Those principles have changed my personality because my personality is a learned behavior and my personality is not even me. Now, page 34, I want you to look at the second paragraph. We're talking about truth to consequences. You have to make the choice for yourself. I'm just going to lay it out for you like a New York lawyer. Second paragraph, here's a litmus test if you are powerless. For those who are unable to drink moderately, the question is how to stop altogether. Why? Because this is a program of complete abstinence. We're assuming, of course, oh, that's a bad word, assuming, you know what that means, that the reader desires to stop. Sound like tradition number three. The only requirement for membership is a what? Desire to stop. Whether such a person can quit upon a non-spiritual basis depends upon the extent to which he has already lost the power to choose whether he will drink or not. Many of us felt that we had plenty of character I once did too. There was a tremendous urge to cease forever, yet we found it impossible. This is the baffling feature of alcoholism as we know it. This utter inability to leave it alone, no matter how great the necessity or the wish. In other words, you can get clean but never get sober. But you can't get sober without first getting clean because guess what? Clean merely means abstinence. But sobriety means you have went through a process and you have recovered your relationship because no relationship, no recovery. Because it has to be a power greater than yourself that can give you the power. Lack of power, page 45, second paragraph, read it for yourself. Lack of power was our dilemma. Your big book dictionary says the word dilemma is problem. We have to find a power in which to live. I don't know about you, but I got so deceived until I was living off the created and not the creator. Or in other words, I hoarded the resource and just completely disrespected the source. Now that is inverted for me. And now as a result of me surrendering, guess what? I'm experiencing the freedom. 
Never had a relapse simply because I simply followed the clear-cut directions and am currently following them. You know, my sponsor got me right now currently making another 90 and 90. And I make 90s, I'm going to make another 90 and 90. And he told me, I want you to be the first one in the meeting and the last one to leave. And when they call your name, all I want you to say is, my name is Abraham and I'm a member. And that's it. Don't even comment. You know, because guess what? We're going back to the basics. Page 55. I would like for you to look at the third paragraph. The third paragraph. We finally saw that faith in some kind of God was a part of our makeup. Just as much as the feeling we have for a friend. Sometimes we have to search fearlessly. But he was there. Capital He. God. He was as much a fact as we were. We found the great reality deep down within us. In the last analysis, it is only there that he may be found. It was so with us. You know, this is very powerful because the only person that can help me regain that which I lost is somebody that knows everything. And you know, I don't know too much, but I know this, my way didn't work. And I hear people all the time, entertainers tell you, you don't recover. Don't listen to that crap. You know why? Because what is happening now is misinformed members that give the disease of addiction more power than they'll give the program of recovery. And guess who's behind the program of recovery? God. So guess who, if you believe in God, you got to believe in a lower power. So guess who is in charge of the lie? It sounds like the lower power. And you know what? I don't know about you, but Bill eloquently said in his story, if there was a devil, he certainly seemed to have control over him at that time. Now, I know one thing. When I was out there, I wasn't doing what I'm doing now. And I had no idea that I was being manipulated, deceived, because guess what? The lie is cunning, baffling, and powerful. In other words, the lie is... Is, a, is trimmed in the truth, but it's not true, but it sounds like it is. So how can a person tell you they have a high power, but they yet still powerless? That just doesn't make sense. But I understand what they're really saying. They're telling me they haven't recovered, even though the program says we do. So guess what? When selecting a sponsor, if the sponsor hasn't recovered, don't let them help you because how can he help you recover if he or she hasn't? Look what the book says and how it works. Last sentence. Remember that we deal with alcohol, cunning, baffling, and powerful. Without help is too much for us. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. May you find him now. You know, there is an invisible power within all of us, and I believe that power is God, simply because the literature is telling me God is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself, and God's will is for me to be happy, joyous, and free, simply because my will caused me to be restless, irritable, and discontent. So I'm very clear on it. God gave me a will, because he wanted me to have it. But the big book says I improperly used the will because I wanted to fulfill my will as opposed to asking him what was thy will for my life. I want to keep going. Page 62. I want to show you something. Last paragraph. This is the how and why of it. First of all, we have to quit playing God. I don't know about you, but I was pissed off at God only to find out later the reason why is because I tried to be God. Fix, manage, and control. I knew what everybody needed to do, and look what happened to me. Look what I did. I almost got myself killed. In other words, everything I knew almost got me killed. It didn't work. Next, we decided that hereafter, in this drama of life, God was going to be our director. He's the principal. We're his agents. He is the father. We're his children. Most good ideas are simple 
every idea I've ever had that turned into something lucrative was a simple idea. Einstein said it best, out of complexity, get simplicity. And this concept was the keystone of the new and triumphant arch to which we pass the freedom. There's that word again, freedom. It derives from two words, free dominion. In other words, you have the freedom to dominate your circumstances and your conditions. How do I know that? Page 417, second paragraph tells me, because acceptance is the key to all my problems. Nothing, absolutely nothing, happens in God's world by mistake. So, I have some power now. Because if you look at the next page, on page 63, it talks about, at the last sentence, next we launched out on a course of vigorous action, the first step of which is a personal house cleaning. Now, I don't know about you, but I've noticed and watched many rockets being launched. And if you notice the power that's behind that rocket to propel it into another dimension is beyond comprehension. So in other words, I can't launch something unless I have the power to do it. We're talking about truth to consequences. And what I'm saying is either you're going to accept the power, step three, or you're going to remain powerless. That's all step three is. Step one is admitting the problem. You're powerless and unmanageable. I was. Notice what I said. Was, not am. Number two. I need power. Guess what? Here comes step three. Now I have to decide, do I want the power or I want to remain powerless? Guess what? I accepted the power. And page 132 says, not only have we recovered, but we have been empowered, given power to help others. Why? Page 45, lack of power is our problem. And if you read those two or three paragraphs, on page 45, you will see that it synthesizes everything that I just said. Because if you recall earlier, I said, don't believe nothing I say. The entertainer had you believe in some stuff that's not in the big book. But if you read that second and third, that or the, the, the first and second paragraph on page 45, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you notice down towards the bottom of it, it says... The members love to hear about the fellowship, but the minute you start talking about God, that's where you're losing because guess what? You don't want to hear about God, but let me tell you something. Without God, you can't get in the game. You can't win, right? Because now you're left up to your own devices. In other words, never discuss your problems with somebody who can't help you solve them. And guess who I was discussing my life with? A coca plant, because I did cocaine. And I drank the alcohol, and both of them, and you know, I thought I was a high-profile drug dealer. Both of them, all three of them, came from a plant. Man been hiding behind plants since Adam. Adam, where are you? Hiding behind a fig leaf. Watch this. Page 98. Second paragraph. But I want to read the bottom of that paragraph. Some of us have taken very hard knocks. To learn this truth. Remember, truth, consequences. What is that truth, Abraham? Job or no job, wife or no wife. We simply do not stop drinking so long as we place dependence upon other people ahead of dependence on God. You know, burn the idea into the consciousness of every man that he can get well regardless of anyone. Notice what it's going to say. The only condition that he trusts in God and clean house. And I believe Dr. Bob added and help others. That's as simple as it is. It's simple, really, really simple. I wanna read two more places because this is so simple what I'm saying that a blind man can see it and a fool could make an error. Would you kindly go with me to page 164? Second paragraph. Our book is meant to be suggestive only. We realize we know only a little. You remember I told you, the more I learn, the less I find out I know. That's why I keep studying. Why? Because only leaders are readers. See, you can read but never study. This is a basic text. 
A textbook is not only a book to be read and regurgitated, but a book to be studied and applied because knowledge comes first, which is nothing but information, but we live in an information age. So guess what the entertainer thinks? Knowledge is power. But guess what the educators know? Knowledge is not power. Applying the knowledge is power. Let me go to number two, understanding. What is understanding? The ability to comprehend the information. But here is where the success lies. You can have the information but not understand it. Or you can understand it and not know how to explain it to somebody. But wisdom, notice in the serenity prayer, knowledge and information is not at all uh, understanding is not in the serenity prayer. The word wisdom to know the difference. Why? Only God can give you wisdom. If for any man lack wisdom, let him ask God. What is wisdom? Knowing what to do with the information you claim you understand in order to get the desired results. In other words, people listen to me, I think, for one reason. Even if you don't agree with me, you cannot deny the body of work or the results. After 38 years of being in recovery, never having a relapse, my life reflects that at least I'm applying something that's working. Now, whether it'll work for you, see, what works for me may not work for you. But anything, like Dr. Silkworth told Bill, anything is better than what you've been doing. Watch this. Our book is meant to be suggestive only. We realize we know only a little. God will constantly disclose more to you and to us. Sound like more to be revealed. Ask him in your morning meditation what you can do each day for the man who is still sick. The answers will come. If your own, if, if your own, if your own house is in order. In other words, watch this. But obviously you cannot transmit something you haven't got. Do you know 97% of the people in recovery have never recovered? And they'll tell you that. They'll tell you, we don't recover. And the literature, as I'm showing you, says that we do. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. We do recover. See to it that your relationship with him is right. I'm constantly asking myself, am I fulfilling God's will? What's your will for me? As a matter of fact, step 11, I'm only praying for the knowledge of his will. And once you reveal to me your will for the day, will you please give me the power to carry it out? Because I can't do nothing without you. See to it that your relationship with him is right and great events will come to pass for you and countless others. This is the great fact for us or great truth, just like the great reality. Notice what I'm setting you up to see. Truth, which is God's truth. Either you accept God or you accept yourself as being God. And I understand, there's no middle of the ground. Watch this. Two more things I wanna show you. Go to page 181, last paragraph. If you think you're an atheist and an agnostic, notice there's no chapter to the atheist simply because the definition of an atheist is a person who simply won't even receive what I'm talking about right now. They won't even entertain the fact that there's a God because they believe they are. But an agnostic says in your big book dictionary, they just need proof. We can work with an agnostic. Why? Because the original big book says, A, you were alcoholic, couldn't manage your own life. B, probably no human power can relieve us. C, you, 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 Trust God or not. In other words, when you get to that point, if you don't accept these three prerequisites, throw the book away and do whatever you need to do because we can't go any further unless you have an open mind. A skeptic, watch this, or have any other form of intellectual pride which keeps you from accepting what's in this book. I feel sorry for you. If you still think you are strong enough to beat the game alone, that's your affair. But if you really and truly want to quit drinking liquor for good and all or using and sincerely feel that you must have some help, we know that we have an answer for you. There's a solution. It never fails. Wow, that's a serious guarantee. That, re that, that reflects something to me on page 58. Rarely have we seen a person fail. It never fails. 
If you go about it with one half the zeal you have been in the habit of showing when you were getting another drink. In other words, if you put half the effort into your recovery that you put off into your using, you will be amazed before you're halfway through. And notice what it says last. Your Heavenly Father will never let you down. You know, if you go back at some of my other videos, you'll find out on Roman numeral uh, page XX, I believe it is. You know, they say the numbers don't lie. And it says on Roman numeral page XX, I believe, at the top of the page, public acceptance of AA grew by leaps and bounds for this. There were two principal reasons. The large number of recoveries and reunited homes. Most people will take those two promises and run with it. These made their impressions everywhere. Notice the numbers. Of alcoholics who came to AA and really tried, circle that. 50% got sober, went at once, and remained that way. 25 sobered up after some relapses. Why? Because relapse is not a part of recovery, but people do relapse because one relapse can kill you. And among the remainder, those who stayed on with AA showed improvement. In other words, the man that wasn't even working on nothing, but just stuck around people in recovery, their lives got better. Why? Because birds of a feather flock together. Other thousands came to a few AA meetings and at first decided they didn't want the program. But great numbers of these, about two out of three, began to return as time passed. Look, I hope this video has helped you. But... I want to leave one more thing for you on page 99. This is my prayer for you. On page 99, I want you to look at the third paragraph on the page. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love, that where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness, that where there is discord, I may bring harmony, that where there is error, I might bring truth, that where there is doubt, I might bring faith. That where there is despair, I might bring hope. That where there are shadows, I might bring light. That where there is sadness, I might bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather than to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is the dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen. All of you out there who have fell short or made mistakes, I want you to know that your higher power has already forgiven you. Now you need to forgive yourself, keep it moving, and know one thing, that God loves you. The only way you're going to make it is with God. And guess what? You can do this. And remember that recovery is for anybody who really, really wants it. There is a way out. So I hope you accept the truth and don't worry about the consequences because the consequences are only for those who don't embrace the truth. This is your big brother in recovery, Abraham. Please share this video with your friends and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.